Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Brandon, and today I want to talk to you about a method of Linux privilege escalation that relies on Docker. Now, Docker is a containerization technology that allows you to run various containers on top of a host file system. Now, if you are included in the Docker group on a Linux file system, you will have permission to spin up all sorts of Docker containers and things like that by default, and that can lead to privilege escalation on the file system. So let's take a look at the machine I have here. This is just an Ubuntu 20.04 machine that I have stood up, and we are SSH'd into it from my Kali machine. Now you can see we're logged in as this low priv user, and with a UID of 1000, we don't have any pseudo permissions or anything like that, just to show you. So the only thing, the only group that we are actually included in here, let's take a look. Uh, whoops, let's just see, it's actually groups. There we go. We're in the low priv group, so the group for our user, and then the Docker group. Now, oftentimes, if you are a user that is in this Docker group, you will be able to perform this privilege escalation method. Now, essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new Docker container, and we're going to volume mount the root directory of our file system to this container. So let's break that down a little bit because it can be a little confusing if you've never worked with Docker before. But essentially, we can run a container running that is running Linux on top of this file system. It's similar to running a virtual machine, but containers and VMs are different technologies. They work in different ways. But if you're unfamiliar with Docker, you can think of it kind of in this way uh, for right now for demonstration purposes, right? Now, what we can do is we can mount part of our file system to this container. So what we're going to do is we're going to take like the slash directory, right? So if we go to slash and do an LS here, you know, this is our entire file system. We're going to take this file system from our host machine and mount it to our container. Once we do that, we'll have root inside of our container and we can manipulate any files on this host file system through the container. That's going to sound a little confusing, but let's go ahead and take a look at it and how it works. Now, just I want to show you the commands to get this set up in case you want to replicate this method in your home lab. All I did for my stock Ubuntu 24 machine was sudo apt install uh, docker dot io that will install docker on your file system and you can have docker on there and then i just added uh the low priv user to the docker group with sudo user mod uh dash ag and then docker and then your username right so then you would add the user to the docker group and you should be all set to go so we already have that done we're already in the docker group let's take a look at how we can actually abuse this for privilege escalation so what we're going to do is do docker run so we want to start a new container instance we're going to say uh, dash V for a volume mount, and we'll do slash colon slash mount. Oh, let's make sure we type that correctly. Now, what this is doing is we're saying, okay, let's mount the slash. Let's, let's mount slash, right? Which, again, is just our entire file system on the host machine to this slash mount directory on the container. So once this container is started, if we browse to slash mount, it's going to be all of the entire file system of our host machine, which we can then manipulate. The next thing we want to specify is dash IT, which is uh, interactive terminal. So once this container is started, we want to have an interactive session in that container. And the last thing we're going to specify is Alpine. Alpine is a uh, container name. So Docker is going to try to pull this Alpine image from Docker Hub and run it. The reason we're using Alpine is it's just a version of Linux and it's very small, right? This I think this container is only like five megabytes. So regardless of whatever bandwidth you are working with, it's going to be super quick to uh, spin up and use. And plus, we don't really need a lot of uh, Linux functionality in this image, in this container we're going to be running. So this is it. Uh, once you run this, it should start a new container. We should be dropped into a root shell of the container. So you can see we are root. If we do ID, we are root. But keep in mind, this is root of the container. This is not root over the file system, the host file system. So if we do a host name here, you'll see it's, you know, this random hex code, which which is pretty standard of a container. Now, the other host name of our uh, real host was Ubuntu. So we know we are not actually on the, uh, the root file system here. But if we do an ls, again, we're going to have this slash mount directory. So if we cd into there, let me clear the screen real quick. Uh, so let's do a cd into mount. Now, if we do an ls here, you'll see it looks like another root file system. And again, this is because we volume mounted the root file system of the host machine to this directory. So everything that we're seeing here is the actual file system of the host, which we can now browse and manipulate as much as we want because we are root in the container. So we have root permissions over this file system. So, you know, you could CD right into root. Um, 
And you know, you could see everything that's in root. You could put your own SSH key in there if you wanted to. There's various ways, you know, you could do a privesk uh, based on this since we essentially have root over that file system. Now, the easiest way that I've found to do this is to just do a VI of uh, Etsy slash, oh, let's go back, sorry, we're in root. So we'll do a VI of Etsy shadow. Now keep in mind, this is slash mount slash Etsy shadow, not slash Etsy shadow, because this is the mounted file system of our host machine. So if we do a VI Etsy shadow, we can see, again, this is the Etsy shadow of our host machine. We can see that we have the Conda user here, we have the low priv user here, uh, and we actually have permissions to read and write to it. Now, the easiest way to privest from here is just go to the second field of root where this little asterisk is going to be. Let's just remove that. What that's going to do is just uh, remove the password from root. So we can just, we should be able to just sue to root now with no password required on the host file system. So let's just do escape and a right quit here. And then what we're going to do is just hit exit and we'll go back to our host machine. So now again, we are low priv at Ubuntu. If we do an ID, you can see we're now UID 1001 again in the low priv user. But now we should be able to do a sue and then dash root. And since there's no password on root anymore, since we changed it through the Docker volume mounted image, we now have root at Ubuntu. You can see our UID is root and the host name is Ubuntu. So so that is how you can use the default permissions assigned to the Docker group for privilege escalation if you are already in the Docker group. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe down below. If you have any other video ideas or things you'd like to see, please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.